I grew up just north of Chicago in a suburb called Glencoe. I've always been interested in medicine since I was young. Some of my earliest memories are in an emergency room. As soon as I turned 18, I took a class and got my EMT license and actually worked throughout my undergraduate in Boston on an ambulance. And I'm planning to apply to medical school next. I'm Justin, and I've been diagnosed with food allergies. I think people who don't have food allergies or don't have someone close with them with food allergies don't appreciate how severe they can be. Anyone who has a food allergy, it impacts their entire family and their world, because food is a part of everything we do. I don't remember my first allergic reaction. I was only a toddler, but my parents have described it to me often. He was 18 months old, I think. I had ordered a veggie wrap, which was had veggies and hummus on it, and he took a bite of my veggie wrap and immediately started turning bright red, swelling up. I was sort of panicked. He wasn't able to breathe and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Thankfully, we were right across the way from the, the hospital, as I've heard the story go, and so they rushed me right there. We were literally at the hospital probably in under two and a half minutes. I was scared because it shows how things could change so quickly, and it was very scary in the first few minutes in the emergency room. They, you know, kind of diagnosed him as having had an allergic reaction. That is when we sort of started down the road of figuring out what he was allergic to. I learned I was allergic to pineapple, chickpeas, tree nuts, peanuts. You have uh, IgE antibody. Normally, these antibodies protect you and they attack viruses and bacteria. But what happens in uh, food allergy is they think, you know, that peanut, milk, egg um, protein is an invader and then they go on attack. They kind of give a signal to release all these um, cytokines and, and things like histamine, which cause your body to have the reaction it does. Kids and adults with food allergy um, do have increased anxiety and fear, especially when they're around food, which is understandable. But it's important for them not only to discuss management of their food allergy, but also um, sometimes the psychological stress that can be caused because of it. I had to sit at the table for, for peanut allergies in, in middle school, and that wasn't always so fun. What I probably felt I was missing out on most were specific foods uh, that people think are really good. My parents did a few things to make sure that I stayed safe. We always tried to look and understand what was in all the food. They really were mindful about making sure none of my allergens were in the house. In my house, I felt completely comfortable and safe. I think my wife and I were always on the same page. Again, the problem is, is there's just always times that no one could foresee the issue. He ordered a salad with Italian dressing, and when it came, he took a bite and started, you know, having an anaphylactic episode. Walnut vinaigrette was their house Italian, and that's just the kind of thing that's, you know, really frightening. Um, now, at restaurants, I always do my best to make sure that the kitchen knows I have food allergies. I've gotten better about it, but it's hard. I think food allergies definitely change someone's relationship with food. It definitely has mine. I'm still a foodie, I still enjoy eating, um, but there's an anxiety every time you do when, you know, a cashew could kill you. I sometimes wondered why I had food allergies, especially because no one else in my immediate family does. So our recent 
data found that about 32 million Americans have a food allergy. And that's about one in 13 kids, so about two kids in every classroom, and about one in 10 adults. It's a lot more than, than we had originally thought it to be. We have seen this huge change in just one generation. My understanding is that no one really knows why food allergies are on the rise in the way that they are. Um, but what I do know is that it only makes it that much more important for us to understand them. We are all trying to understand you know, how food allergies develop. We usually saw food allergies developing in children, and we thought it was something that they developed early on, and it was primarily genetic with environmental components. About 25% of adults reported their very first food allergy in adulthood. So this really um, surprised us in a way where we didn't understand. What would be that turn on switch in adults who could previously eat a food and then now you know, develop a food allergy? Three years into studying food allergies, uh, my daughter, who was then one, was playing with my son, then four, eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And he um, touched her, and she pretty much broke out in hives from her face down to um, her belly. And that's when I not only was studying food allergy, but I became a parent of a child with food allergies. I know how it feels to be sitting in that classroom, getting the food allergy talk, all the attention is on you, all the eyes are watching you. Knowing that your friends understand is the best feeling. Food allergy bullying is somewhat normalized. Small jokes like, oh, waving something in your face, or oh, you can't have this, can really hurt sometimes. Even though we have food allergies, we're just like everybody else. I've gotten over thinking about them as a weakness. I know they're not, it's just something I have, but that took a lot of time, especially when I was younger. Some of the difficulties in parenting a child with food allergies are about what happens when he's not with you. Teens do take risky behavior in general. We know that. And so oftentimes they do with their food allergy. They will go out with their friends and they think they're eating something that's pretty safe, like, you know, pizza or, you know, they, things that typically don't have their food allergen in it anyway. Or they'll try things with their friends um, because they don't want to ask the question or feel different. I had food allergy attacks um, more than I'm proud of. I probably had uh, an allergic reaction once a year, and they varied in severity. Food allergic reactions can go from mild to anaphylaxis and become life-threatening. Mild reactions can be things like vomiting, hives, itching, swelling. Respiratory and cardiovascular are, are typically more of your serious symptoms. When I ingest one of my allergens, I typically know immediately. I first feel it in my throat, uh, but shortly thereafter, I'll develop a rash, typically on my chest. I'll usually vomit um, before I start wheezing. And if I'm wheezing, it's not good. I have asthma, and that typically is what I've been told makes my anaphylactic emergencies a little bit worse and why my respiratory symptoms are almost always there. During my undergraduate, I had the opportunity to begin working at Northwestern um, in what is now their Center for Food Allergy and Asthma Research. So Justin came to work in our lab, and he was this bright, energetic, hardworking intern when he started. He never told us that he had asthma or food allergies, even though that is what our research was around. I did not tell anyone in the lab that I had food allergies mostly because I didn't want to be a burden. And I didn't really feel like it was appropriate to, to put the attention on myself. It was that one crazy day where uh, I'll never forget. 
I was walking back from a place where I always had gotten lunch and there was a sampler of some kale chips that I wanted to, to try. And so I, you know, on my way back, took one, tried it. When I got back to the lab, I had already started having a reaction. Knocked on Dr. Gupta's office door. He is flushed, he's red, and he's like, Dr. Gupta, I, I ate something. I think I'm having an allergic reaction. So I, I, I sat him down, and about six of us walked with him to the emergency room. She walked in, I'm an attending here. Got in and working with the team, she saved my life. There's a picture of us in the emergency room with the emergency team and me, and I know she's ended a few of her presentations with, with that photo. That really solidified uh, what I would call a, a really strong kind of mentor-mentee relationship, and I continued working with Dr. Gupta throughout my undergrad, but it's definitely solidified my understanding of how severe my food allergies are and the importance of always carrying epinephrine Epinephrine is the first-line treatment for a severe food allergic reaction or anaphylaxis. And what it does is it reverses those symptoms. It tightens your uh, blood vessels and it, it relaxes your airways and it allows your body to recover. You can breathe a little bit easier, which is a huge relief. Everyone with a confirmed diagnosis of food allergy should have an epinephrine auto injector and should carry it with them at all times. Adults who had a convincing food allergy, about only half of them were getting a diagnosis, and only about one in four had a prescription for an epinephrine auto injector. I've used my epinephrine auto injector a few times, and you do get pretty immediate relief, which is a crazy experience because epinephrine is just adrenaline, so you're going a thousand miles a minute after you use it, you still need to go to an emergency room after the fact. It's pretty wild. It is so important that caregivers, anyone taking care of your child or you yourself know how to use this in case of an emergency. Because if you are truly having a severe allergic reaction, you need to use this immediately. One fun thing uh, we do, uh, we have people bring in all their expired auto injectors and then we get fruits and we use the auto injectors and people can feel how it feels and the pressure and it really does relieve some of the fear because there is fear around using a needle uh, in your child or in yourself, uh, but practicing and, and getting used to it. And so when you're in that situation, it just comes naturally is really critical. If you eat a food and have a negative reaction and don't know what's going on, you need to get to an allergist and get tested. Only about half of adults and about 60% of kids are actually getting a formal physician diagnosis. The allergist will do you know, one of three tests or multiple tests, either the specific IgE blood test, a skin prick test, or an oral food challenge to confirm your diagnosis of food allergy. When I was younger, I remember the skin prick test for some of the tree nuts, they had to stop it early because my whole arm would swell up. And the IgE test I've done, um, a number over 0.35, they consider allergic. Some of my numbers were in the hundreds. And an oral food challenge I've also done, um, the first to peanuts that I passed. But my sesame oral food challenge, I, I didn't pass and I actually went into anaphylaxis in my allergist's office, unfortunately. What's exciting is a lot of research is being done around new diagnostic testing. Um, some of the things that are coming out on the market are component testing, so they measure different proteins. And there are certain proteins that are more allergenic. So that is one test that shows quite a bit of promise, especially for peanut. Um, other tests are epitope mapping tests. Another one is the basophila activation test. So researchers around the country are trying to find better testings that are more accurate uh, and can really tell you if you do have a true food allergy without putting you through the oral food challenge. Because prevention is the mainstay for people with food allergy, all we had was being careful and, and avoiding your food allergen as much as possible. 
I actually feel like now there's a lot more therapy options and that wasn't really available to Justin when he was young. Some really great landmark studies recently found that early introduction of peanuts may decrease the development of peanut allergy by 80%. So this caused the American Academy of Pediatrics really to reverse their guidelines. But will this work with all foods? If we get more diet diversity early in life in infants, uh, can we avoid all food allergies? And that's something that we're looking at too in our lab right now. What it is is uh, incorporating or eating small amounts of peanut protein and then working your way up uh, until you can tolerate a peanut or a couple of peanuts. Now, currently what this does is it helps with accidental ingestion. So if you accidentally eat something, it is not known to let you freely eat foods. People with food allergies should not fear for the future. They should be very hopeful. There is a ton of research being done to help find better treatments for food allergies. So I am very hopeful in the next 10 years, people are gonna have choices to treatment. Thankfully, my prognosis is good. I fear having another allergic reaction, um, but I, I don't fear the future. I count my blessings and thank God that it's a manageable condition and I've thrived despite them.